and decisions that we are kind of just you know taking taking what you get and uh certainly a player like tyson who historically has been very much a control player yeah um you know again one of the greatest if not ar you know arguably the best player in the world um being able to be put in a position where his decisions can be more impactful, why wouldn't you put yourself in that spot? Yeah. Sure. I, I like how the, the guys have roles on the team. And we talked to the players a little bit. In University of Texas Arlington, they wrote down a little bit of things about themselves. Uh, Jackson, who's one of the players, who's Shadow Star, he says he's the main pilot of the team. He usually controls the decks. Uh, Austin, who's uh, Dark Blade, he's like, I, I pilot a few decks, the ones that I specialize in. And also, I take notes during the matches. And then Reagan, who's Defonce, Guy on team. That's his notes. <laughs> That's his role. He's the guy on the team. Oh my god. Yep. So I want to be that guy. <laughs> yeah. Just along for the gets, ride. Because he, he gets 2K at least. Yeah, he does. <laughs> He's the real winner, man. Look yeah. at that big bump finger in the in the uh, North Carolina. Go heels. Go heels. Yeah. They're, they call their team the Hearth Heels. As <laughs> uh, kind of play on words, they're the Tar Heels over in yep. North Carolina. Very, uh, you know, a very strong legacy over at Tar Heels for comp competition in general for that yeah. school. Well, uh, you have the Knife Juggler and you have the Haunted Creeper, but is it the time to unleash it? You can also play Minibot instead. Yeah, I mean, when the when your opponent follows up with, with one ones and then a turn two piloted Treader, a lot of the traditional style plays don't really work in this situation. I mean, your opponents, they've cheated the curve already. So if you're going to take over the situation, what's the best way to do it? I mean, maybe... Maybe you do just kind of send the knife juggler in, into the foray and hope that he comes out alive. But uh, you know, maybe you take the shield and minibot and try to play a more slow, methodical game. With two true silver, with two true silver champions in your hand, I think I would tend to favor a slower game here because you have that recovery potential. I mean, should you get past the hump, things are looking pretty good. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, I agree too. I I trying to see if I like a wrath for one to draw, and I think it's better than just wrathing. And like killing a mini bot, for example. To do? Just because your hand development in the following turns is still the same exact scenario, you're just going to be relying on the board versus developing something. Plus, you don't know if you have the opportunity to wrath into a Darnassus Aspirin, and I think that gives you a lot of flexibility to do so. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm in favor of being able to wrath and draw. The removal means that you're like all in and protecting the pilot shredder. Which on four mana, the Paladin, it's really easy to deal with. Yeah, they're going to favor just taking it out straight away and uh, forcing North Carolina to have some sort of answer to this, which I don't mind this either. I mean, if say they don't have True Silver Champion, this Pilot Treader is going to keep on swinging. Yeah, but at the same time, you have to also wonder about Blessing of Kings or even to a certain degree, like you know, Cog Hammer or something else that like really stalls that plan. And then I guess you're, I guess they feel comfortable because they have Wrath Number Two, so that at least they have a turn four play. And then they're going to be reliant on drawing on... Like, they have two or three turns to draw something else that can play on turns five and six. Yep. You just got to get the true silver out. There's just, there's just really no other play here, I don't think. I mean, maybe if you're feeling lucky mm. with this juggler. You have to you be can... feeling really lucky with that <laughs> juggler. Because you have three total juggles, and you need to deal with three damage, or else it's not that useful of a... Well, the True Silver so Champion isn't just answering the minion, but it's answering the next minion as well. For the you following answer right here. Let's see, one-eyed cheat falls down. Hey, there it is. The perfect answer. Pretty good result. So they take. They actually are, are a spot to take initiative here. University of Texas doesn't pick up anything relevant in this spot. Forced to draw more cards. Yikes. Savage War is no benefit either. Their turn five is looking dead right now. And if that turn five is dead, and UNC is able to develop here, which they will be, which they will be, yeah, then they could be in for some troubles. Yeah, I mean, if their turn five is dead, they are probably also dead as a result. You know, they have some power on turn seven coming out of this, but oh, Innervate oh. just shut off by that Lothab. I mean, it's not completely dead. They have Big Game Hunter to at least have something on board, and that way Dr. Boom has more to work with. But if they don't even drop Big Game Hunter, they're going to be really far behind. Yeah. Because the thing about BGH is that you know it's Secrets Paladin because of Haunted Creeper. Sure, no secrets have been played, but Haunted Creeper is only really beneficial to Paladin in that scenario. So you need to keep Big Game Hunter for Mysterious Challenger, but Mysterious Challenger isn't coming. And in fact, we've had someone that's just equivalent to that, like 5-5 to 6-6 hitting your face. Yeah, and we'll just play all the secrets from our hand. 
<laughs> Who needs to pull out of the deck? We already drew them all. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It is still secret spells. It looks like they even swung with the True Silver champion. They, I mean, they know their game plan right now. They have eight more damage in hand with the other True Silver. You got to start swinging. For I like sure. it. I like it a lot. Especially since their hand right now, they're not guaranteed to have any more Ooh. threats. And uh, this is one of those things where it's like. If the Druid of the Claw was one card off of being able to be drawn, and if they draft for one more, you know, do they have that ability? And and this is the thing that just ends up snowballing because you can't really blame Texas for some of the decisions that they made, like wanting to protect their Shredder. But you know, they they also also got a little bit unfortunate with the one one coming out of it. It's like they yeah. not die so easily. It's, it's well below. I mean, that's well below average. Well, yeah, and, and in this case, uh, you know, mix that with the fact that they didn't have oh, a couple of wonder. turns, and Palin just running away with the game here. Yeah, turn turn five being dead for Druid is like. It's pretty much the nightmare. I mean, even if it's yeah. just another piloted shredder, uh, even if it's just swipe, like pretty much anything that yeah. you can play is okay. I mean, Lothab shut off all of the spell utility. Yeah, and that and that was and that was it. I mean, this game is it's not over just yet, but it's pretty mm. darn close to close out. Yeah, I mean, UNC they have well, mustard for battle here with the knife juggle. <laughs> I'm serious. I, and I I don't disagree with you. I mean, it's it's certainly something that you have to be worried about. Oh, Boom bots, and then the next card he draws a swipe. He's back in. Still both swipes left in the deck, so it's not that far fetched. Reporting for two. Well, we gotta go though. These animations the take some bots. time. And if it hits like Lothar for four, something absurd like that. Eh, slightly off the mark. This one. Some of the one ones. It's a really good outcome for the Pallet again. Yeah, they do have Noble Sacrifice activated, so if they want to get this Doctor Boom attack in, they'll have to invest two mana into using Hero Power or something like Charge Shooter the Claw. Of course, Redemption's sort of inconsequential just because, you know, it'll just be a 2 1 uh, with Noble Sacrifice Force activated. Force Nature, at the same Savage Roar. Or, I'm sorry, Force Nature have been enough. Force Nature, Innervate, Savage Roar, attack for two, proc the. And then you have 12 plus 9. Wow, they would have been one damage off lethal with Force Nature draw, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That would have been really close. Yeah. But um, still no cigar. Can he stay alive if he heals himself? You go up to 14, 15 if he hero powers. And then there is 12, 12 damage on board. So I guess he technically stays alive. Uh, but there is true silver and consecrate. Yeah. Either, right? Well, it's, yeah. That, it's that consecrate true silver burst that TJ was <laughs> talking go. about. Six damage from hand. Yeah, I mean it's pretty much shorted up at this point. You know, there's just there's not room to go. They're doing everything they can to try to stay alive, but at the end of the day, just too much pressure from North Carolina. They run away with this game because of a dead turn from University of Texas. And you know what that means? Going to game five. Going to a game number five. Two matches in a row. Gosh, I love it. There's just nothing like five game sets where Good All the golly pressure's gosh. on. Everything that's happened at this point, you can throw it out the window. We're coming down to one game for all the marbles. And you know what that match is, too? A good old-fashioned Druid Aww. mirror. I know that's one of Frodan's favorite mirror <laughs> matches. No, I was actually disappointed that Fender didn't finish the game off. It actually lived. <laughs> no. We get to hear what it says. He didn't even get his glory.